Well, on to a CNBC TV 18 exclusive now. We understand from sources that the coal ministry will hold a stakeholders meet on coal swapping policy for private sector tomorrow. Anshu Sharma joins in with all the details on this exclusive story. Anshu, hi, go ahead. After PSUs and states were allowed to swap coal linkages to reduce transportation cost and increase materialization of coal in power plants, as well as industries dependent on coal, CNBC TV 18 now learns that the coal ministry will now be meeting the private sector companies to discuss ideas and issues of coal swapping. We understand there will be no restriction on quantum of coal to be swapped between private players as long as the companies stick to their respective contracts and coal from spot or forward auction. Uh, will not be part of coal ra rationalization. Some of the issues uh, like swapping between one end user to another, invoicing and taxation issues, also methodology for coal co uh, quantity of multigrade uh, coal for swapping are some of the issues which will be further deliberated upon by the interministerial group. Now, coal rationalization will help bring down coal transportation cost, which will eventually give relief to consumers in their electricity tariff. But for the non-regulated sectors like steel, aluminium, cement and others, the Benefit will have to be passed on to the railways. Now, so far, 61.08 million tonne of coal has been rationalized with an annual potential savings of about 3,651 crore. Back to you. Okay, Anshu, thank you very much for that. Let's shift focus then to the big global queue. Wall Street and the lower Asian markets are selling off after the Federal Reserve raised rates for the fourth time this year. While the Fed did lower expectations for future rate increases, they said in 2019 we will see two hikes versus three earlier. They did say that they will continue to shrink the balance sheet, and that is something which spooked the markets. To discuss this, we're now joined by Hartmut Essel of UBS. He joins us on the show now. Hartmut, thanks so much for joining in. Well, uh, the U.S. markets have already fallen close to about 8 to 9 percent so far in the month of December itself. So they've entered into the correction territory. Do you see further cuts for the mother market? Well, maybe uh, going first uh, quickly, what, why, why was the reaction relatively negative uh, overnight? Um, because it, we didn't see too many surprises in my view. Yeah? So we, we saw a you know, little bit for everybody, also for the for the bulls or for the doves, if you will. So essentially an indication that um, the uh, the pace that we have pretty much every quarter is a hike of the last two years, that that phase is already coming to an end. Um, and the other point uh, I think was also interesting to notice that we, we uh, received the signals that uh, once the Fed is close to neutral territory, there's not much appetite to over tighten, if you will, right? because in, in previous cycles or say on the equity side in previous bull markets, that's often what you've seen, it tightened too much and then it causes things to slow too much. So we're not going to see that either, either. So it could be that some in the markets maybe expected uh, uh, Chairman Powell to sort of indicate an outright pause for an extended period, but that would have been a far shot to begin with. Hartman, uh, shifting focus away from the Fed now, you know, the Indian markets have outperformed uh, compared to a lot of their global peers, for example, the Nikkei, for example, Shanghai on a year-to-date basis. Um, so what's your view on India and do you expect this kind of emerging market or India outperformance or resilience to continue into next year? Um, when we started the year, my view on India was relatively muted, I should say, um, pretty much you know, close to 5%. So, so in local currency anyway, that's close to where we are. Um, I expect roughly a repeat of that also in 2019. I mean, the outperformance of India, to be fair, also was helped this year uh, by the uh, strong underperformance of, of benchmark heavyweights uh, is it here in the region, like, like Korea, like, like um, China, of course, in particular, with the, with the trade tensions. Now, um, if, as we believe, um, uh, some of this, it will probably take a while, but some of this goes away next year, you know, some, some compromises being, being found on the trade side, um, then those markets, or especially China, of course, as the benchmark heavyweight, could come back. So uh, in terms of outperformance, I see that as unlikely. Now, in terms of can you make money in the Indian market, um, it has corrected. It's become uh, less expensive than it, than it has been, but it still looks expensive to me. And um, some of it, I think, the, this, this premium valuation, some of it at least is based on, on factors that I don't think are necessarily sustainable. So you have an offset, right? very reasonably strong earnings growth for, for India. I think we can expect that next year, even though consensus, I think, is far too high. Um, but some, some moderation on the valuation. So probably, again, leaves you with 4 or 5% upside for the year, in my view. 
Okay, 4 to 5 percent return for 2019 for the Indian markets and markets like China, Korea, which have underperformed this year, could actually reverse their underperformance if some of those trade tensions go away. Uh, Hartman, what about the U.S. markets? What are you forecasting by way of equity returns and what will be the key themes that will play out? Yeah. Well, in the U.S. market, we don't have a particular uh, over or underweight, so it's fairly neutral. But we have a global overweight, and, and by by nature, that includes uh, a lot of a uh, lot of the U.S. because it's such a high weight. And the U.S. right now has a lot of pros and cons. Right? So on the on the con side, you could argue, of course, the earnings growth is going to be a lot slower. You had. Um, uh, to, to some extent also artificially high earnings growth this year because of the tax cuts, then uh, U.S. Uh, S&P 500 earnings, they benefited a lot from the, from the rising energy prices, which next year, even though we, we do believe energy prices rise from, from where we are, but you know, the, the, the base is just not as low anymore. So, so we expect closer to 5%, not a, not a negative number, but it's a lot slower than in this year. But then again, the markets have already tried to factor that in. The market is, as you rightly said, the market is down. This year we had 25% earnings growth. You put another 5% on next year, so the market has derated quite sharply. It leaves you kind of in a in a position where you don't regionally want to overweight it, but you want to still participate. You want to be part of that. In terms of the themes or the sectors we we uh, try to explore, there is uh, is value, mostly value, so especially energy and also financials. Okay. Uh, Hartmut, it's been a tough year for a lot of commodities and one of them which stands out and particularly important to us is obviously Brent crude prices. Uh, the view is that maybe it could probably stabilize to higher levels in going into next year, $60 per barrel or plus. Uh, what's your view? Yeah, we're a bit surprised how uh, uh, how low oil has uh, has come in the meantime. So we, we do think it will rebound. Um, if you have a case that it wouldn't, you make you need to make very very strong assumptions. Right? So 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 one is because we're already cutting at, at current price levels, we're already cutting in the U.S. shale cost curve. So it already starts to hurt some of the producers there. Um, so which then normally when that happens also curtails with with a few months uh, delay naturally it curtails um, their supply. And the second assumption you have to make is that uh, OPEC plus I should call it so the OPEC maybe Russia etc. They uh, cannot agree to to really in a disciplined fashion execute the announced uh, production cuts. We we we're skeptical on both, so we we actually see quite a bit of rebound potential for oil. Okay, rebound potential for oil. Hartman, thanks so much for joining in. For now, you can't see it. Crude prices have slipped further. What close to about a ten percent cut so far? You would have seen for Brent crude this week and off about thirty percent yeah. plus from its October peak levels. Get into a break. Up next, here Rudramurthy of Vachana Investments join in. joins in.